Yo, what up everyone? In this video, I wanna talk about some key points of some of the recent trading setups that I've seen. I wanna go over some of the charts, some trades that we took in my Discord community, along with how we can use this to improve for future trades and honestly properly strengthen our mental game by relating it to the charts I'm gonna show you guys. Before we get into it, all I ask is if I add any value to your trading, I would appreciate it if you could leave a thumbs up on this video. And if you haven't already followed me on Instagram, I'm going to link it in the description below at Investitrade. I recommend everyone to follow me on this. I post daily trading recaps along with very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you you're not going to find anywhere else. Link in the description below. You're missing out if you're not following it. But now let's get right into this really good lesson. To understand this a little better, let's go over the pre-market plan. I post these every single day in the Discord, the setups I'm watching, levels I'm looking out for, and potential trading setups. So today we had the S&P 500, and the context with this was we were selling off overnight into a very key area of demand at 4520 and 4500 bucks. We did a webinar on Sunday night. I recommend everybody that is an investor trade to go back and watch it. I talk about very key points, about very important things that I've been seeing that could better our trades. So I said I cannot get bearish above these levels. So I couldn't expect more downside if we were above demand. And I have to remain bullish until we start seeing some heavy selling pressure at demand where buyers do not show up. I said I'm going to be watching for the market to bounce at these demand zones where I will be looking to play long, targeting supply above. I said it's Monday, so I personally want to see more development to gain more context. This in result will enable me to read the market a little better for the highest quality of setups. So I stress this, I will remain extra patient today, especially since it's a short trading week. So this action was December 20th. It was Monday, the start to the week. Obviously, we have Christmas at the end of the week, so it's a short trading week. And the first point I want to make is before the market even opened up, just by analyzing the chart and seeing what we had over the weekend, see what we had on Friday, and see what was happening overnight and the levels we were selling off or even rallying into, I knew that the quality of setups was lacking so because of this, I wanted to see more development to better read the context. And the more context, the more development, the more structure that we see in the market, then it's easier to come up with a high quality trading plan. So I recommend when you chart, when you analyze your names and you try to find setups, don't force a setup because you want to be an active participant in the market. If you don't see something, it's better to sit on your hands and avoid it and only trade something when you see a proper trading setup that you could properly read the context and get a lot of information at. So in the first, now we're going to a five minute chart. In the first two hours of the market open, we were selling off, right? Now, yes, you could capitalize on puts. There were a bunch of members that did capitalize on puts for this 30 point sell off in the morning after we did reject VWAP and it did act as resistance putting in lower lows, also putting in lower highs when the market opened up. This is the S&P 500, by the way. So yes, you could have capitalized on puts, but going back to my plan and the structure and the setups that I'm looking out for, I could not get bullish or I could not get bearish being above these key levels areas of demand. These are very, very key areas that the market has to hold and we are going to test it to see how buyers react at that zone. So for me to get bearish and for me to play puts on this, it can work. But from a quality standpoint and the setups that I know work out for me the best, yes, I could scalp it. Yes, I can make money off of it. But it's really not on the high quality side of the spectrum of the trades that I'm looking to, to you know put on. So yes, we did sell off. Yes, we did. Actually, this, this demand zone was not even valid prior to the market opened up. We broke below it. Uh, so that honestly shouldn't have been even been on my charts and that actually caused a little more noise than I probably would have liked. But then we started selling off into this very key, like I mentioned, 45, 20 and three quarters demand zone. I stressed how important this was in the webinar as well. And at 11:13, before we even hit the zone, I said these 45, 20 
to 4,500, ES spy demands are very key to hold. If buyers show up here, or if buyers don't show up here and we act like demand isn't there, I'm going to view it as a very weak market. So with this context, we are watching this level to hold. Now, this is what I mean about developing a deep relationship with price and volume. I put a picture on my Instagram and I actually said, and I even talk about it in my videos, you must develop a deep relationship with price and volume. I look at the charts as a canvas and I look at the market basically painting a picture on the canvas. And my job as a trader is to kind of see what the picture is before it fully gets painted and before others see uh, what I'm trying to see. So I try to spot some things before others could actually see it. This is what I mean about watching the candles paint its picture, watching the market paint on the canvas. It's something you're only going to understand by having this experience and the screen time. I mean, you could see this NQ action. This is a straight barcode in the first hour and a half of the market open. Now NQ, same exact scenario from the pre-market plan. I said it's in a tough spot in my opinion. I'm not getting too bullish. I'm not getting too bearish just yet. I personally want to see more development to gain more context in order to come up with a high quality trading plan. We also were selling off into key demand zones. Now in the first hour and a half, we were like a barcode. You know, I even in the intraday commentary tab, I put a barcode out there. You know, we were moving sideways. So to trade this in a trend trading manner, you are going to get destroyed. Watching the market paint its picture. Yes, we had high volume today or higher volume, but we really didn't have high volatility. And as day traders, as scalpers, as momentum traders, you want to see higher volatility because higher volatility brings more opportunity as there's more interest in the market. So then eventually we broke out of that balanced phase right into this key demand zone at the same time the S&P hit demand. And yes, we did put in a higher low and yes, we did bounce off of it. The analysis worked out perfectly. But looking at this chart, not only after the fact, but during the day, I was stressing how important it was to be patient, sit on your hands and capital preservation over capital growth. In these conditions, you have to try to preserve your capital because these are lower volatility or lower volume or volatility conditions. Uh, so yeah, we sold off. Yes, we hit demand, but watching the price paint its picture, you're really not going to see it other than small candles right now, but we were moving slow. It was like a turtle was, you know, crossing a road compared to the action that we have been seeing, you know, especially on uh, Thursday selling off. Friday, that the nice uh, volatile rally, and today was a little different. On Monday, December tw uh, December twentieth was very different. So this is the lesson I want to get into. Lower volatility. It's not only do you have to recognize it a little prior to it actually happening, but you have to develop when we are in lower volatile conditions because these will mess with your emotions. These conditions will have you thinking a hundred different possible scenarios when the real true answer is not a lot is going on and you are going to force setups that probably could have been avoided. Now, not only this, but lower volatile conditions are not favorable to increase the option premiums like we would want to see. We all know options do get based a lot from volatility. And especially if you're trading a Monday expiration on Monday on SPY in this example, you know, these contracts, you know, yes, our analysis worked out perfectly, right? We bounced off that key demand zone and rallied about 50 points. But because of the lower volume, if I were to pull up SPY, the 454 calls, which I believe at that point was one out of the money, at the time we bounced off demand, they were at 50 cents. And 15 minutes later, they went up to a dollar. So yes, you could have invested 500 bucks and made a $500 profit, a little over 100% return in 20 minutes, right? But by the time the market pulled back and put in a higher low, never got below the low of the previous low at that demand zone, these contracts were lower 
in value than we were at that point that we bounced off of this demand zone. So this is where we bounced off demand and this is where we put in a higher low on the chart, yet the option premiums put in a lower low because of the lack of volatility and because of the lack of time if we are trading, you know, today's expiration and the market closes in another, you know, 3 hours or 2 and a half hours. So at this point, yeah, we put in a higher low. These went from 35 cents to a dollar forty in about an hour period, so three hundred fifty bucks if we bottom ticked it to a top tick at a dollar twenty five. Three hundred fifty bucks would have turned into a nine hundred dollar profit in two hundred seventy two percent return in about an hour. And yes, by end of day, these went up three hundred fifty percent. But still, the lower volume conditions are not only going to mess with your head, but they are going to move the premiums a little funky. And because they're moving a little funky, if you're watching your profit and loss or you're watching your uh, premiums basically do nothing, it's going to subconsciously mess with your emotions. So because of this, when we recognize these conditions, I cannot stress, I say this to invest the trade members all the time, patience pays. Lower volatility requires you to be patient. You get paid to be patient. Literally sit on your hands. If you don't see a high quality trading setup, then in my opinion, you should have no reason to put a trade on. You have to trade when the probabilities are in your favor. If they're not in your favor, why take the trade to begin with? Or if you want to put a trade on, at least trade with smaller size. If your normal size is like 10 contracts, maybe go to three contracts or maybe go to five contracts. Cut it in half. Lose the money-making mindset and focus on the process. You collect this data. You get your eyes trained for different markets, different scenarios. And I guarantee you, you'll become a better trader. So yeah, we bounced that demand perfectly. The analysis worked out perfectly. Uh, it was a clean bounce for 50 points off of that. But because of these conditions, this is not a high-quality trading setup for me. I'd rather avoid this. If the conditions look like this, it's not worth the mental capital. It's not worth the headache from seeing my entry at 50 cents go to 35 cents, even though I'm still correct on the chart. It's just not worth it. And I'd rather preserve not only my money, but also my mental capital for a scenario like tomorrow where we're going to get a perfect, you know, 10 out of 10 trade or, you know, maybe Wednesday we're going to get a perfect 10 out of 10 trade. A lot of traders, I see them force setups like this or, you know, another setup just in general that is a lower quality one. They take a big loss or they take a small loss and deplete a ton of mental capital. And that subconsciously affects their um, thought process that affects their performance for the next trade. It's almost like an opportunity cost. What we do right now might affect us for a better scenario at some point in the future. Right? So you have to think of these things as you're trading. And I say this all the time as well. You get paid for your opportunity. You do not get paid in the market for your time. You could sit in the front of the screens for six and a half hours a day. But if you don't see any opportunity, you are not going to get paid. So if there aren't any good opportunities, I don't understand why some people have the itch or feel the need to trade when they really don't see a good opportunity. Now, if you're sitting here asking yourself, you know, what is a good opportunity? How do I know what a good opportunity is? If you can't answer that question, I'll say it straight up. You do not have an edge. And if you don't have an edge in the market, you are gambling. And I guarantee you the, the market will take from you more often than you take from the market. So fix your mindset, adjust, adapt, learn the proper things, learn yourself and learn your emotions. Price and volume is all you need. Very, very simple analysis, no reason to overcomplicate it, and watch your trading change for the better, and watch yourselves take the next step forward to find consistency. Now, I also will leave you all off on this point. I put this in the intraday commentary. You all have to stand these lower volume conditions. It's easier for the market to become manipulated. When there's volatility, we've been seeing amazing volatility the past few weeks, past few days. The setups have been pretty easy, very easy to read the context. And I know myself and a bunch of Investor Trade members have been killing, spying QQQ specifically, 
absolutely killing it, destroying them names because of this volatility. So when there is volatility, your orders get lost in the noise. When thousands of others are trading, many orders are coming into the market. We're moving up and down in large ranges. There's volatility. It's so much harder to manipulate the market. And this is why we get the biggest moves. Think of this analogy. This is Carmine Rosado, How to Rob a Store 101. Kidding, right? It's like walking into a store and you're the only one shopping in there. It's easier to monitor if you're the one stealing because you're the only one in that store shopping. You go to Walmart, you're literally the only person in there shopping. There's nobody else. It's easier for the security to know, to keep an eye on you, see what you're doing, and making sure you're not putting, you know, something in your pocket. Now, if you go into a store that has 100 other people in there, this is what I mean about other people trading in the market and there's volatility. Now we walk into Walmart, there's a thousand people in there. It's going to be so much harder for the security to monitor you specifically or determine who's stealing what, who's putting something in their pockets, what they're putting in their pockets. You understand what I mean? So when there's volatility, that's when we get the best conditions and the best setups. When the market's not volatile, you can still make money. There's people that played calls off demand and made five figures today. You know, I get the messages all the time from members. It's you know, amazing thing to see, to see them focusing on the process and the profits following, but you have to understand the conditions. So I hope that helped. If you enjoyed, you learned something from this video, drop a like, comment if you have any questions, and definitely check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course that will come with the access to the Discord at no extra cost. I will be raising the prices before year end uh, as soon as I add the tape reading section. I believe so. So on that note, peace out.